and our hope. Amen. Content warning. Uh, today's message begins with a, when I was a kid, story. When I was a kid, <clears throat> and, and I hope lots of people as, as, as children have had this experience. Sadly, the children didn't have it this morning. Uh, but they might be having it now. Who knows? But do you remember, do you remember when I was a kid, we had a big Palm Sunday parade. Everybody got a palm branch, not just a little palm cross, but a branch, and you got to wave it. We had a nice, happy, upbeat song to sing with it. You know, something really cheerful that kids can really get a handle on, like All Glory, Laud, and Honor, or Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Um, anyway, we'd, we'd have a really... You know, Powerful song. We'd all march around with a parade, waving our palm branches and stuff. And uh, uh, then, of course, with little boys, you know the, those palm branches, that, the ones that they make the palm crosses out of? They're these big, long things where the branches all stick together, almost like a little fan. But when they're all pushed together, they make a sword. That's a lot of fun, too. Big celebration, because that's what the story's about. It's about a big celebration, right? Um, and so we'd have a big celebration. I can also remember, not even just as a kid, doing this as an adult, trying to make it happen. I remember once, uh, I remember once doing a parade around the block, around a church, where we got, we got everybody uh, outside, waving palm branches, singing, singing, unaccompanied, obviously, but I think it was all glory, laud, and honor, you know, one of those great child-friendly hymns um, that, that we all know, though, right? We all know, because this is when we use it. It's like, it's like Christmas, right? We know specific songs only because they happen for that time, right? Specific occasion. It's a big moment, is my point. It's a celebration, and we always try and relive that moment of celebration, because this is how we tell the story. It's a big moment of celebration, and then... Stuff happens, and the crowd that was cheering Jesus turns on Jesus, and by, you know, Friday, it's, they, they, they want him dead. Can I just point out a few things here? Just give me a moment to point out a few things. So, first of all, the story appears in all four of the Gospels, only John mentions palm branches. We call it Palm Sunday. We make a big fuss of waving palm branches. The only person who has palm branches actually in the story is the guy who came later who had long enough to think about it and think about where we were all at as followers of Jesus before he started to write the story. Can I also point out, by the way, that it's not just a question of palm branches would have been handy. In fact, I'd have serious doubts that palm branches would have been handy in the city. But it's not just a question they were handy. Palm, palms mean something. They're a sign of, of, of victory. They're a sign of peace. They're a sign, they mean something. Different traditions have different meanings for them, but they mean something. So just to recap, the guy who told the story later, who had time to think about it and wonder about it a little bit and see where people were at with it, is the one who puts in the palms. The other stories all refer to them putting their cloaks down, which is, it's like making a red carpet, right? It's honoring a king or a great leader. You, you put your cloaks down. On the, it's not just one of those, remember for a while it was, remember, if you remember the 16th century, it, for a while it was the thing you do. You take off your cloak and you put it down over a puddle so that a woman can walk over your coat rather than through the... It was a thing. Um, one or two of you remember it, I'm sure. Uh, but it was a thing. <laughs> That's not what this is. This is something different. This is symbolic. Ooh, just like the palm thing. It's symbolic. They put their coats down 
to create this sort of carpet to honor this great leader, this great dignitary, this king who's coming. But John's the only one who says palm branches. Luke in particular, I, I, Luke has the story we heard this morning, Luke has a particular way of telling this story that reveals a bunch of stuff. Jesus comes into Jerusalem from the direction of the Mount of Olives riding a colt, the foal of a donkey, thereby fulfilling a prophecy that that's how the Messiah would appear, a prophecy that everyone would know. But let's just be clear about that for a second. It's not a question of it simply happened and somebody went, ooh, that fulfills the prophecy. Jesus made it happen by sending a couple of disciples to go and get him a donkey so that he could appear to be fulfilling the prophecy. Let me just say that again. He could appear to be fulfilling the prophecy. It's not as if it just happened and, and there it is. It was made to happen. I also point out that Luke says that the crowd that cheered Jesus that led him into town, were disciples. They were already followers. They were already people who knew Jesus was. They knew what he'd done. They were cheering him on because they knew who he is. It's not like Jesus arrived at the gate of the city and the entire city went, hoo-ah, it's Jesus, and had a big celebration. In fact, I bet there was a bunch of people in the city going, What's all the ruckus? Who is that? Oh, that's who it is. All right, back to work. There would have been people who went out and said, oh, great, it's, oh, it's that guy Jesus we've heard about. Sure, there would have been people who would have turned away and thought, I don't care. In all likelihood, there was probably more than a few people who then ran off to the Romans and said, hey, did you know that guy Jesus was in town now? You know, that guy who's been causing all the ruckus with the Pharisees and the leaders in the temple? And, like, he, he, does, he does actually say some stuff about you guys, too. We tell this story as if it was a great celebration that everyone participated in, and then that same crowd turned on Jesus later in the week. What, what, what if? What if it wasn't like that? What if, what if the followers of Jesus, taking Jesus' cue from fulfilling the prophecy thing, created this great moment of theater to say, here's Jesus to the community? And then some of that community went, oh, great, super, yeah. Some went, I don't really care. And some went, oh, yeah, no. What's that mean then for what then happens through the week? What's that mean for us who celebrate this moment as if everyone was in on this great party moment, this great moment of celebration that the Messiah was here? I wonder, and I would say each time, particularly as an adult, that I've participated in those moments of celebration where we wave our palm branches, we have a nice perky song, probably one that nobody really knows now because we're trying to get more child-friendly perky songs, um, and, and, and we're trying to learn those, and we're trying to wave our palm branches, and we're trying, like, just like trying to have a good time because it's a celebration, damn it. What if, what if... It wasn't that. What if it wasn't like that? What if, what, if, what if, in fact, the message in all of this wasn't actually meant for the moment? What if it was meant for us? This message of, we created this moment to announce the arrival of Jesus, 
but not everyone reacted to it the same way. Some people perhaps went, yay, it's G- oh, I can really get on board with that, yeah. Some people maybe went, I don't know. Some people went, no. No. What, what, if it, what if it's not just a question of turning on Jesus at the moment of disappointment of that's not the Messiah we expected, where's his army? Why hasn't he overthrown the Romans yet? Love? Love our enemies? What? No, no, we kill our enemies, that's what we do. What if that message wasn't actually for the people in that moment? What if, what if the message for the people in the moment was the action of the love, like the healing, the life of Jesus, it was all about healing and caring and, and doing all of those things? That was the message for the moment. But the message of not that kind of Messiah wasn't just for that moment, but for us. That it would take time and learning and understanding. It would take hearing the story from the disciples, those first disciples who went out to share the story of Jesus. What if it would take more than just that moment? What, what, if, what if it would take more than just that moment to realize the point of the Messiah isn't to rescue us from the, the, the Roman oppressor and to restore Israel to its greatness, but the message is to change something even more fundamental than that. To actually change lives and how we live. It's not just a question of defeating an enemy. It's not just a question of restoring glory. It's, a cha- it's changing how we, how we relate to each other. It's transforming relationships and creating the kingdom of heaven. Where, where love and grace and compassion are the things that lead not, not aggression or control or, or power over others. I, I, I doubt that kind of transformation was going to happen in a week. And, and yet, being the Sunday people that we still find ourselves to be sometimes when it comes to how we uh, recognize and honor our celebrations, we'll have a big celebration for Palm Sunday because they had a big celebration for Palm Sunday. And then we'll have an even bigger celebration for Easter because they, they didn't have any celebration at all on Easter. In fact, the first Easter day wasn't a day of joy at all. It was a joy of that began with grief and then moved through fear and anxiety and all sorts of things before it got to the point where there was joy. Not joy, peace. Right? Because remember, Jesus' first words when he appears to the disciples is, peace to you. Don't be afraid. I'm peace to you. Maybe instead of trying to celebrate the moment today, what we might want to be thinking a little bit more about, and like that kind of celebration, you know, that kind of celebration where you go, it's the great hero, and you hold them, you maybe wave from a distance back to the palms, wave from a distance. Maybe this is a moment where we bring Jesus a little bit closer. We want to hold on to Jesus all week long follow through these experiences of Jesus. These moments of, well, we're going to roll through this week, we're going to start with celebration, we're going to roll through anger and and teaching where there'll be prophecy of the end times and, and cursing fig trees and stuff, and then we'll get to the Passover supper. Ooh, what incredible timing was that, that Jesus appears, the Messiah appears at Passover, the, the celebration of a story that's about freedom, 
the exodus from Egypt. Huh, interesting timing, isn't it? All part of the, the theater, the drama that takes us through the week. We, we can't just act like we can't just act like Palm Sunday is one of those moments to once again hold Jesus up at a distance, put him on a pedestal. We, we need to bring him down and hold on to him and walk through the week with him and experience that. So please do, please do read the story through the week. We have, we have a service on Monday, Thursday in uh, Pinocchio. We have a service on Good Friday here in Bashaw uh, and, of course, Easter Day. But we can't get there without traveling through the week. We need to experience it with Jesus. That may not have moved people in the day, but maybe that wasn't the point. Maybe the point was a bigger change, a bigger move, a bigger transformation. 